the United States Navy is on the brink of transforming into the United States Air Force. Instead of serving as vessels of the sea, aircraft carriers are poised to become airborne entities akin to the planes they launch. This transition aims to showcase the formidable power of the U.S. Navy with unparalleled visibility. While the notion of a flying aircraft carrier may seem unconventional, it is not a recent development, having roots dating back to the World Wars. Now, with advancements in technology, these airborne platforms are garnering renewed interest, prompting the United States to pursue groundbreaking flying carriers once more. The current buzz surrounding airborne carriers may largely stem from the overwhelming supremacy of U.S. maritime-based aircraft carriers in today's world. Notably, a quarter of all global carriers are under U.S. ownership, boasting a combined deck space that exceeds twice that of all other nations combined. Furthermore, the leading members of the USS Ford class of these carriers eclipse the lethality of any other carrier in history. The subsequent attributes serve as evidence of this. Thirdly, nuclear propulsion drives the USS Gerald Ford with two Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors, representing the pinnacle of marine power technology. Consequently, the carrier necessitates refueling only once throughout its 50-year operational lifespan, harnessing the perpetual energy of nuclear power. Thus, the USS Ford can operate continuously for 25 years before refueling. With a maximum speed of approximately 30 knots, this supercarrier can reach any country worldwide promptly, enabling friendly diplomatic engagements with allies and delivering decisive blows to adversaries. Secondly, advanced sensor technology and processing systems are integral to the USS Ford's capabilities. This aircraft carrier boasts state-of-the-art sensors, processors, and armaments necessary for achieving a delicate equilibrium between intelligence gathering and combat effectiveness. Distinguishing itself from nearly all other carriers globally, the USS Ford implements a unified system for both horizon and volume search duties, embodied by the AN-SP Y3 multifunction radar featuring X and S band active electronically scanned array technology. This radar system remains the pinnacle of U.S. technological advancement, offering remarkable versatility in tasks such as surveillance, air traffic management, missile communication, and long-range target identification. Firstly, American fighter aircraft and unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, are paramount. The USS Ford can accommodate up to 75 fighter jets and UAVs simultaneously, among which is the Navy's prized possession, the fifth-generation F-35 Sea Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter. This aircraft's development program stands as the Pentagon's most expensive to date, with an estimated cost of $400 billion. Such a substantial investment has resulted in a fighter aircraft capable of fulfilling a wide range of roles, including close air support, vertical takeoff and landing operations, and various other missions, solidifying its position as the Navy's primary choice and a cornerstone of military strategy. However, the spotlight may shift to the sixth generation FAXX fighter in the future. Nevertheless, the USS Ford is already equipped with the necessary technologies to accommodate, launch, and retrieve this next-generation fighter when the time comes. These capabilities, alongside others, contribute to the U.S.C. unrivaled dominance at sea. Therefore, an airborne adaptation of these capabilities could extend the U.S.S. invincibility into the skies, representing the ultimate objective.
numerous initiatives have been established to accomplish this objective. While actual flying carrier concepts might not possess the dramatic flair of Marvel's SHIELD helicarrier, they represent the closest approximation achieved in the past century. Reflecting on history, this journey takes us back to the era of airships. As early as 1917, Experiments involved aircraft suspended beneath airships, dubbed microfighters. Initially, serving as defensive assets for airships, these airborne craft witnessed a shift in purpose with the decline of airship popularity. Consequently, diverse flying carrier programs emerged, each showcasing unique characteristics. Boeing 747 Airborne Aircraft Carrier in the 1970s, the U.S. Air Force explored the concept of transforming one of its massive aircraft into a flying aircraft carrier equipped with parasite fighters that could be deployed and retrieved mid-air. Competing for this role were the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy and the Boeing 747. Boeing surged ahead by highlighting in their proposal the superior range and endurance of the 747 when flying with a full payload of an impressive 883,000 pounds. Consequently, the 747 could accommodate up to 10 microfighters simultaneously. Boeing undertook the specialized design and construction of these microfighters to fit within the 747 alongside an apparatus facilitating the large plane's capacity to transport the fighters over long distances, deploy them strategically, retrieve them, and potentially refuel them as necessary. However, certain ambiguities emerged regarding the fuel range and the effectiveness of Boeing's microfighters against the sophisticated threats they were expected to encounter. In the end, the proposal remained confined to the pages of Boeing's report. Nevertheless, the report affirmed that, notwithstanding the hurdles, the concept, while potentially expensive, was indeed technically viable. Atomic-powered Lockheed CL-1201 Lockheed, committed to pushing boundaries, opted to develop a colossal flying aircraft carrier comparable in size to a conventional one. This aircraft, or flying carrier, would weigh an astounding 5,265 tons and rise as high as a 14-story building. To achieve flight for such a massive structure, the design incorporated a 1,120-foot wingspan and a 560-foot-long fuselage equivalent to two and a half Boeing 747 spliced in to end. Surprisingly, the Lockheed CL-1201 could be propelled by merely four massive turbofan engines fueled by standard jet fuel up to an altitude below 16,000 feet. Beyond this threshold, nuclear energy from an onboard reactor took charge enabling the jet to operate continuously for 41 days without refueling or landing. During this period, it could sustain a cruising speed of Mach 0.8 and soar at approximately 30,000 feet above ground level. Manned by a crew of 845, it could deploy 22 multi-role fighters and accommodate a repair hangar. However, the astronomical costs and extensive labor required for production and maintenance likely contributed to its failure to progress beyond the proposal stage. Nonetheless, its conceptualization remains a historical curiosity that continues to attract global interest. The B-36 Peacekeeper Another aircraft earmarked for enhancement to accommodate microfighters was the B-36 Peacekeeper Strategic Bomber. To deploy its microfighters, the McDonnell F-85 Goblin would be utilized, with capacity for up to four of them. In the 1950s, the B-36 was the preferred choice due to its immense size and weight. 
with wings spanning 230 feet. It surpassed even the B-52 Stratofortress, solidifying its status as one of the largest aircraft ever to grace the skies. Laden with fuel and weaponry, its weight soared to a staggering 410,000 pounds, highlighting its remarkable capabilities. Despite these impressive specifications, the B-36 never saw combat action. Although initially intended to bolster the USC's ability to efficiently bomb Berlin, the conclusion of World War II rendered this ambition obsolete. Subsequently, the Air Force contemplated repurposing it as a flying aircraft carrier. However, this idea failed to materialize as advancements in mid-air. Refueling significantly extended the operational range of various aircraft, diminishing the significance of the B-36 Peacekeeper's capabilities. Lockheed C-130 Hercules In contrast to endeavors from the 1900s, the U.S. has recently turned its attention to a novel flying carrier initiative. Since 2015, the United States Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency known as DARPA, has been exploring the possibility of utilizing a modified Lockheed C-130 Hercules cargo aircraft to deploy and assist Dynetics X-61 Gremlins unmanned aerial vehicles as microfighters. Upon completing their tasks, these microfighters are retrieved using a unique air recovery method, employing a drogue-like receptacle and docking technique. Trials are presently underway at Dugway Proving Grounds with International Air Response, providing the contracted C-130A. In January of 2022, DARP a successfully conducted a test, launching an X-61 Gremlin UAV from the C-130's bay. If the trial achieves success and the aircraft carrier is officially commissioned, it would empower the U.S. to dispatch drones from mother ships while remaining beyond enemy air defenses. This capability would allow the drones to engage targets before returning to the vicinity of the mother ship for recapture and transportation, back for maintenance or repairs. However, not all tests have yielded positive results. Despite one test, confirming the drone's deployability by the C-130, the drone itself ended up being destroyed due to a parachute failure after an hour and a half of flight. Nonetheless, this issue is likely an easy fix that can be addressed in subsequent tests. With this setback resolved, the program will proceed as planned, paving the way for the emergence of similar initiatives and ultimately granting the U as the capability of a supercarrier in the sky, complementing its already formidable fleet of aircraft carriers. Experts suggest that subscribing to this channel and liking this video would further enhance the power of this fleet of aircraft carriers and flying carriers. Remember, this advice comes from experts, so please consider doing so now. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching.